Hi, I'm Jackie McElroy, and in this video, I want to go over some of the new features in our latest release, Apex Office Print 20.1. We wanted to start off the year with a really nice release for you guys. There's a lot of features that people have been asking for for a while, and hopefully we got some of that in here for you to use. One of the most exciting things about this release is our integration with Apex 20.1. It's now even easier to use AOP inside of Apex. You can simply specify AOP as the print server for your entire Apex instance in the instance settings. As you probably already know, ORDs and Apex have deprecated the native XSLFO printing, but with Apex 20.1, you can use AOP as a replacement. Apex will use AOP to print native, interactive, and classic reports. We're looking forward to future releases of Apex, and hopefully with the release of Apex 20.2 later this year, there'll be even more AOP integration within Apex. Another really exciting thing that we included as part of AOP in this release is Apex Media Extension. If you're running AOP on-premises and you have a gold or enterprise license, Apex Media Extension is now included. So what is Apex Media Extension? Apex Media Extension, or AMI as we like to call it, is our newest product, and it allows you to manipulate images in the Oracle database. So Oracle recently deprecated Oracle Intermedia and Oracle Multimedia. So AMI was kind of designed as a replacement for these tools. You can do lots of cool things with it. You can resize, rotate, flip, crop, add multiple overlays, or just a single watermark. You can compress images, make them grayscale. You can change image formats. You can even get image information and read the media metadata. AMI was designed as an alternative to Oracle Intermedia or Multimedia. We try to make AMI as simple to use as possible. We have an Apex plugin, which you can use to simply drag and drop your media files and perform any operations that you've specified automatically in your browser before the media is even uploaded to the database. We also offer a PLSQL API. If you have media stored in the database that you need to transform, you can use our API to manipulate just one file or perform bulk operations. All features, including resizing, compressing, cropping, adding watermarks and overlays, and reading metadata are all available to be used on media stored in your database. If you want to find out more about Apex Media Extension, you can visit apexmediaextension.com. We have a sample app available that you can play with to see a demo of the different client-side and server-side operations. We hope you find Apex Media Extension helpful and easy to use. If you have any ideas or feature requests, please let us know. Now let's move on to some of the AOP-specific features we've added to this new release. Something that a lot of you guys have requested has been generic report tags. We've always had the concept of a generic report tag for interactive reports, but this hasn't been the case with interactive grids or classic reports. For interactive grids, a lot of you probably know you had to use the static ID of the grid inside your tag. That's no longer the case. Now you can use the same concept that we use for interactive reports, and we have a single tag. This way you can make generic templates for your reports without needing to know the static ID of the region. So let's take a quick look at the difference between the old and new templates with the generic tags. So in the previous version on the left, you can see that the classic report is using the report one tag, which is referring to the static ID of the region. In the new version, you can use classic underscore one. This is not the static ID. This is simply a generic tag that you can always use to grab the first classic report on your page. You can even display multiple reports on the same page by just incrementing the number after the underscore. Now let's take a look at the results. With our new template using classic underscore one and classic under, underscore two, we can display our classic reports exactly as they were shown on the screen using generic tags in our template. The same is true for interactive grids. I know a lot of you have requested this feature, so I'm really glad it's finally here for you to use. Please give it a try and let us know what you think. By the way, the tags are backwards compatible, so if you're using the old version, it's still going to work. You don't need to update your templates in order to switch to the new version. Another cool feature that we've added in this release is embedded files or including files inside of another document. So if you have, let's say, a Word document and you actually want to physically attach 
another Word document to your original, you can now do that. Before getting into this example, I want to show you the query behind the scenes. Remember inside our sample application, if you download it, you can either open it as an Apex developer and go in and look behind the scenes. We also make all of the content available on the screen itself. So you don't have to switch between being a developer and a user, or if you're using our online sample app, instead of installing it on your own environment, you can still see all of the sources being used behind the scenes. So if you open up the template and data source being used section, you'll see the query behind the scenes for our call to AOP. And you can see that we're querying for a few files inside of our data source. These files are aliased as file to insert one, file to insert two, and so on. So if we take a look at our template, you can see that we want to include our files at the end of a letter. So we've got some different tags. The question mark insert portion of the tags tells AOP to insert the actual file attachment. And then you're just referencing the file to insert one tag that you used as the alias in your query. Now, when we export our file in the result, you'll see our letter and then our files included below. And you'll see the little file icon for the type of file you've included. And you can double click those and open them just like any other file. We've also added the ability to include PDFs as images in Word or PDF files. With this, you can actually query from your database an existing PDF and render it as an image inside your document. Let's look at an example. If we look at the query in our AOP dynamic action, you'll see that we're pulling in a PDF straight from the database and we're calling it IMG for image. We're also specifying the image max width and height so that when it's rendered on the document, it'll look the appropriate size. Now let's take a look at the template. In our template, you can see that we're using just our regular image tag, no change there. But like magic in the output, you're seeing an image of the first page of your PDF inside your Word document. The next feature I want to show you is the use of dynamic formulas in Excel templates. Up until now, you've always had to specify your formulas inside of your actual Excel template. Now to make things even more dynamic, you can pass your formulas in with your data. So let's take a look at the example in the sample app. In our query, you can see that we're passing in a couple of values on each row, as well as a formula. The formula is specifying the cells exactly like you would specify them inside of Excel. As your formulas, you can specify actual value manipulation, or you can specify cell numbers to be referenced as a generated formula. So in our template, you can see we're using our special formula tag. And we have a constant formula, and we also have a generated formula based off of the values inside of our loop. Now, if we run our report and we look at our output side by side with our template, you'll see that our constant formula was evaluated as well as our generated formula. If you inspect the cells of your generated formula in the result, you'll see that it's an actual real native Excel formula specifying the cells used in the formula. We've also added a new data source. You can now pass an array of SQL statements into AOP. Previously, if you wanted to pass multiple sets of data to AOP, you needed to write your SQL query in cursor syntax. A lot of people found this cursor syntax very confusing, and so we've tried to make this a little bit easier. We hope that passing an array of SQL statements will be a little bit easier than writing cursor syntax. Behind the scenes in our example, you'll see three different sets of data being passed into AOP. These queries are using a new type of query list um, that we've created specifically for this purpose. You can simply define an item in your list by giving it a name, passing in the query, and setting any bind variables you need to use inside that query. Then in your call to AOP, you simply use the new SQL array data type and set the array to the list you created. In this example, our output is our AOP template, but you can easily see that each of the three distinct sets of data are represented in the template. No cursor syntax needed. AOP also now recognizes column toggle reports and reflow reports. You can now print those just as easily as any other classic report.
We've also added a bunch of new samples to our AOP sample app, so be sure to download the newest version and check it all out. One of the new samples that I want to highlight in this video is our new QR, data matrix, and barcode example. This is a really fun example that highlights all the different kinds of barcodes, QR codes, and data matrices that you can create using AOP. I'm not going to pretend to know what all of the different kinds of barcodes are, but I'm just going to show you how to use this example. You can simply select a type out of the list and add any options or features that you want to use. Uh, you can even select the different rotations, invert it, add text, all that good stuff. You can click the show barcode button. It'll render the barcode on the screen. Then just click the print with AOP link and you can see your barcode generated by AOP. We have a lot going on in this release, so I encourage you to check out our release notes. Go to apexofficeprint.com, play with our online sample app, even better, download the sample app and play with it in your own environment so you can really go behind the scenes and see what's happening in each example. If you ever have any questions, we're always happy to help. You can use our community supported AOP Slack channel and you can always email us at support at apexofficeprint.com. We're happy to hear from you with any feedback, comments, and of course, any issues you may be having. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching and thanks for using AOP.